Hey everybody, I'm out in my pub. Just thought I'd uh, make a video. I've been writing. I've got like four services I'm planning for the next week or so. And so uh, I've been doing a lot of writing out here, just trying to get focused in on that stuff. But uh, I wanted to take a break because I wanted to do a midweek video. And I can't send it out on Thursday, which is what I typically do. And you get the information I want you to have right now. And the information I want you to have is this. We have an Ash Wednesday service at 7 o'clock. On Ash Wednesday, that's tomorrow night. Maybe tonight you'll celebrate with a Fat Tuesday meal or some big festive party that you have. I don't know what your tradition is. I don't typically do that, but maybe you do. And that'll set you right up for an Ash Wednesday service, 7 o'clock at the church tomorrow night. Hope you'll kick off your Lenten season with us at Ash Wednesday. We are not, as I think I've mentioned a few times now, not going to have Wednesday services throughout Lent. Uh, we won't have another service again until Palm Sunday that's related to Easter. Then, of course, Holy Week. We'll have a Monday, Thursday, Good Friday joint service. And then uh, we'll have, of course, an Easter service. So, uh, 11 o'clock, normal time of worship on Easter Sunday. So, uh, we'll give you more information as we move through, but Ash Wednesday is tomorrow. Hope you'll join us, 7 o'clock. Uh, second thing is, the um, Thursday Face Study class has been canceled. I've got a funeral due tomorrow, and so I will not be available to meet. So I want to make sure everybody got word about that. And if I send that on Thursday, it too would be too late for people to actually know. So making sure everybody's uh, well informed. Now, let's see. The last thing I wanted to mention was uh, when I asked what people might want in, a, in the old creative midweek video, uh, you might remember I said, I'm not sure I'm going to do it. Uh, and so far I haven't, but I did remember that some people said uh, that they, one person said, uh, that they would like for me to comment on current events going on in the world. Um, and so I'm going to comment on the Russia-Ukraine crisis. Um, and I guess I'll use a, just an analogy, uh, the way I view it, I guess. Maybe um, that's helpful if, if you hear how I kind of have my perspective on it. And so I'm going to offer that to you. Um, I kind of liken it to something I've used before, an analogy I've used before, which is um, when talking about church conflict, uh, there was an analogy I once heard that it was like that, that some people kind of can instigate issues in church conflict, and if you're going to be a person who goes in there to try to negotiate and kind of help a situation in a church, you might be aware that some individuals might be considered more like a virus. And the virus is such that it isn't stopped unless someone stops it. In other words, a virus has to have a host, uh, kind of like the coronavirus. It has to have a host, um, and it will keep on taking and taking and taking and taking and taking and will not what's called self-regulate. It can't self-regulate. It needs a host, it starts to take, and as it takes, it takes more and more. It's not unlike cancer. Uh, cancer has to have a host, and it will keep on taking more and more and more unless it's stopped. In the case of the virus, we of course use masks and we use the vaccines to stop that virus. In the case of cancer, we of course use chemo and radiation and other treatments to help stop the cancer from spreading. In the case of church conflict, we all have to be strong enough to be able to say no when someone is bringing up something we know is detrimental to the church. And I mean uh, being divisive uh, and pulling people apart. Uh, that's kind of how I understand this Russia and Ukraine thing. Um, Russia seems like right now, and Vladimir Putin seems like a uh, bully, a bully on the playground. And the bully, uh, like the virus, like the cancer, um, has to be stopped. And so I, I think, in, in, in my view, uh, always the first options are peaceful solutions, and then uh, ratchet that up with sanctions I think is important for us to do to make it very difficult for them to continue to be uh, people who are uh, kind of imposing their will remember my 11th commandment you cannot impose your will on another by force manipulation exploitation or deceit in other words you can't impose your will on another and it seems to me that Vladimir Putin is trying to impose his will on the Ukrainian people and so I would say in that case uh, diplomacy, any kind of sanctions we can that we can use, any kind of negotiation, anything to stop this. But ultimately, if the virus, which will not self-regulate, in other words, it won't stop itself, won't stop itself, then somebody has to punch the bully in the nose. Uh, the playground bully has to be 
uh, met with some kind of resistance. And I feel like that's what Vladimir Putin is. Uh, he is a bully right now who seems to be wanting to impose his will on others. And for that reason, I think uh, while I'm not pro-war, I am definitely pro-justice. And I am definitely pro-stopping a bully from um, uh, what enacting injustices on another group of people. And so that's where I stand on this whole thing. I don't think I'm in... I think I'm in the majority. I don't think I'm in the minority. I think most people probably hold that kind of view. Um, it's difficult when it's a Christian situation and you're trying to figure out how do we move forward and how do we uh, respond to this kind of a situation. Well, I really do firmly believe that when an injustice is done, an injustice has to be met with justice. And so uh, that's where I feel like uh, we as, um, as, as Christian people have somewhat of an obligation to stand up, use our voice, use whatever method we need uh, to be able to say, you know what, this injustice can't keep going. And so uh, that's where I stand on this particular issue. Uh, it's interesting because the coronavirus is a virus also that uh, just keeps on taking and taking and taking. Thank goodness it seems like the numbers are declining now. It seems like the number of new cases are going down anyway. And uh, so that's a good thing. Uh, but I still would say, you know, I'm such an advocate for um, getting your shots and for wearing a mask uh, in certain situations now because it is the one thing that stops a virus that will not stop itself. It will not voluntarily stop. It has to be stopped. And so uh, it's kind of the way I feel about the virus. Get your shots. Get your vaccinations. Make it happen so that this thing can be stopped. Otherwise, it'll just keep on taking and taking and taking. I think the same again for Vladimir Putin. Uh, if we just let him go, uh, he'll keep taking and taking and taking. So Anyway, that's my comment on what's happening in Ukraine. I think more than anything right now, what we can do from our vantage point is to pray and pray and pray some more. I do believe that that makes a difference and that whenever we have an opportunity to raise our voice in uh, opposition to injustice and do what we can to help stand up for justice and for people who maybe are more vulnerable, we need to do that and do it uh, as best we can and as forcefully as necessary. So anyway... Uh, that's it for me and the and the video. Remember, Ash Wednesday service, 7 o'clock, a great way to kick off Lent, a great way to reflect on yourself, your relationship with the church, your relationship with God, your relationship in your faith with Christ and the Holy Spirit. Be reflecting on that during the season of Lent and get that started off with an Ash Wednesday service, 7 o'clock tomorrow night at Fourth Presbyterian Church in the sanctuary. Until then, I hope you have a blessed remainder of the week and go forth in Christ.